What's up everybody and welcome to another Patreon pick video. This month the topic is top 10 scariest movie moments. And this might be one of the most subjective top 10s that I've ever done in my life. Funny enough too, I'm somebody that has always said, as long as I've been on YouTube, that very, very, very few movies have ever genuinely scared me. So this was kind of a difficult list to think of to where most people could probably pick out 40 or 50 scenes. I had to kind of go through and go, wow, what scenes, what moments, or what you know segments of horror films genuinely unnerved me, scared me, or impacted me? And I think I came up with a pretty damn good top 10. So as always, guys, if you want to join in on the fun with these Patreon picks, be sure to check out my Patreon page. The link is down below. It's the best way to support this channel and get cool exclusive privileges like being able to vote in videos like these, getting exclusive access to digital copy codes that I give away to my patrons, as well as a lot of other stuff. So thank you very much for your consideration and let's get rolling with the top 10 scariest movie moments coming in at number 10 is one of the quieter moments in a movie that you think probably would not be traditionally the scariest scene but for me it's not only the scariest scene but it's the best scene of the movie and that is the quint monologue from jaws jaws is a movie that is very in your face with its predator with its monster where you have the different scenes of the you know shark taking people underwater in pov style or even a lot of scenes where people are getting dragged under a big pool of blood you never see the shark even scenes where the shark comes out you know i'll just come there and chuck some of this shit but the scariest scene of the movie is when you have these three men that are drinking, that are enjoying a quiet evening on the ocean, and Quint tells the story about the USS Indianapolis whenever him and all the other survivors of this shipwreck started to become attacked by sharks over days and weeks. You know the thing about a shark? He's got lifeless eyes, black eyes, like a doll's eye. When he comes at you, he doesn't seem to be living until he bites you and those black eyes roll over white and then oh then you hear that terrible high-pitched screaming but the slow methodical way that robert shaw delivers this monologue and the way that hooper and brody just kind of absorb this story and are like kind of stone-faced the whole time when he's talking about how the eyes of the shark will just kind of roll over white as they bite into you and you hear those blood curdling screams and the crimson goes through the water. It's a powerful ass scene that will chill you to your core if you are afraid of sharks or if you're invested in the movie. Number nine is bringing it to one of the greatest sequels of all time in Aliens and it's the face hugger attack scene. From all of the crazy intense sequences that are in this movie, the one that is always tensed me up the most is when you have Ripley, you have Newt, they're both in this little medical room that's locked and sealed, you have these sprinklers coming down, and then you just see the face huggers just starting to come over the walls and come underneath desks and over things. There's two of them locked in this room. One of them's scary enough, but you have two of these spider-like things, which I do not like spiders, so there's one thing for you. And then knowing just the the not so subtle violation of how a face hugger just attaches himself to your face and sticks its thing down your throat and impregnates you with this thing that's going to blow out of your chest. You have two women, one being a child, trying to defend themselves in this tight knit room in a crazy situation. My God, this scene will make the hair stand up on your neck. Number eight is bringing it to a movie that you either love or hate, but there was two sequences in this film that I thought were genuinely unnerving. I had to pick one, and I went with the bedroom scene in The Babadook. Now, The Babadook is a very conf confrontational movie whenever you try to discuss it with somebody, because it's either like, oh my God, this is a genius movie, or wow, what a big piece of shit. There's nobody in the middle. I've never met one. Uh, I end up on this camp, I think it was actually a pretty damn great horror film for the time, especially when there was not a whole lot of movies like this. And you have this story of the Babadook that's told throughout the movie, and then you get to this scene where the mother is laying next to her son, and they do this great thing in like haunted house movies where they just make the air in the room be the only sound you can hear where every little move in the mattress, every little step onto a wooden plank, everything that could possibly make a noise is amplified about a thousand times in this quiet wooden house. Mm -hmm. 
and you hear these scratches at the door and then the door comes open and she puts the little blanket over her eyes and you just have to hear what's going on in the room. It's a very crazy sequence that definitely is probably the scariest tied with another sequence that I like near the end of the movie of the Babadook. Number seven, the scene that rocked the slasher genre forever, and that is the entire opening sequence of the original screen. Maybe an opening sequence doesn't count as a movie moment, but my God, you want to talk about a scarier, more tense, crazy opening to a horror film? I'll wait. Find one. Some kind of joke? More of a game, really. Can you handle that? Bloody. Number six is a movie that I don't know if I can recommend as a whole, but there is one sequence in it that has always stuck in my mind as freaking me the fuck out when I first saw this. And that is The Innkeepers. This is a movie where you have these two kind of paranormal investigators going into this old inn before it gets demolished, I believe, trying to just, you know, discover the sinister things that have been talked about in it. And it's a very slow burn movie where not a whole lot is going on for like at least the first hour. And then get to this scene where Sarah Paxson, I believe is the actress's name, where she's laying down in bed, she can't quite sleep, she's tossing and turning, she sits up and starts to wipe her eyes, and then this movie kicks off with a fucking punch with the reveal of the bride ghost. Maybe it's because the movie sets you up as not expecting anything to happen for so long because it is just these two characters not really finding anything for a majority of the movie and then this scene happens. Maybe it's the sound design of whenever the ghost is revealed. Maybe it's the design of the ghost. Maybe it's all three. But this scene has always stuck out to me when people talk about what's a, ske a scene that really just jumped out at you where you were like, holy shit, and had to grab the couch. That is one of them. Number five is not only one of my favorite Stephen King adaptations, it's one of my favorite movies, and it has one of the most intense sequences, and that is Misery, of course, the hobbling scene, which I know is different in the book. I believe she chops his feet off, which is almost not as effective, if I can be honest with you. Something about the way that it's a little bit more subtle here and not quite as gory and in your face I think it's more I think it's more intense. I think it's more effective. So you get James Kahn, who's this famous writer. He writes these romance novels, this character misery. You get Kathy Bates in I believe what was her first role. And she comes under the scene, comes into Hollywood with a freaking punch and wins an Oscar for this role of Annie Wilkes where she's the psychotic fan. She keeps him into her house and basically holds him hostage into writing another novel for her. And eventually she finds out that he has been getting out of his room, plotting his escape. And he just wakes up one day, tied to his bed, with her fastening everything down. He's got a wooden plank between his ankles, and she just pulls up this sledgehammer and just knocks his ankles to the side and basically immobilizes him for God knows how long so that he can't leave. And just not only is it the setup of this scene to where you feel like you're as confined as James Conn while you're watching it. You're like, oh my God, no, it can't do this. She can't do this. And some of it's just how calm Kathy Bates is in her performance when she's like, oh, she's not, she goes from always being very calm to very neurotic. And this is one of her calm, scary scenes. And it might even just be the visual. I think they had like this jello filled, like false foot where she hit it and just kind of goes, and goes to the side. And you're like, oh, God damn. And he forgot. Shh, darling. Trust me. God sake. It's for the best. Hey, please. Ah! It's just a fantastic movie and that sequence is always the one that everybody talks about. It's always been impactful for me and even as somebody who's, in my opinion, as small and as insignificant as I am with my 45,000 subscribers compared to somebody that's this world-renowned novelist, I've had a few interactions with really weird, creepy fans. And so it's something that 
as time has gone on, that whole concept has just become more and more real to where I'm like, Ugh. I have an interaction with somebody and I'm like, I'm gonna have to block you so that I don't end up as a skin lamp or hobbled on your couch. God, I love you. Number four is from a movie that I definitely will not recommend to you, but the first 15 minutes or so, I think you could watch and just be done with that. And that's all you need to watch with it. And that is the original When a Stranger Calls. This is a movie that I remember I was almost like it was yesterday. I was sitting in this kitchen with my dad and his girlfriend at the time. And we were talking about scary movies and my dad brought up When a Stranger Calls and started describing the opening of this movie. And I'm sitting there listening to it and I'm just like, I need to watch that. And I searched and searched and searched and finally found a blockbuster that had When a Stranger Calls, rented it one week. I believe it was like New Year's Eve or some shit like that. And I was watching it in my mom's apartment. And the whole opening of this movie, I was in the dark, it was quiet, it was just me in the apartment, she was out somewhere else, and I'm watching it, and I'm so engrossed at this babysitter in this house that is filmed so brilliantly to make it look like this vast, open place, but so confined and so scary because of its emptiness, that uh, when you start getting these phone calls, have you checked the children? Have you checked the children? Bobby? What? And she's like, what the fuck is going on? And then you know, the score starts coming in, and the cops can't really help, and the phone calls get a little bit creepier, and then eventually the reveal where the cops trace the call, and holy shit, the guy's in the house, get the fuck out. You see the door open, the silhouette of the dude stepping out, you're like, fucking bitch, God! Leave me alone! Jill, this is Sergeant Sacker. Listen to me. We've traced the call. It's coming from inside the house. Our squad car's on the way over there right now. Just get out of that house. The whole opening of this movie is insane. It is some of the scariest stuff ever put to film. Unfortunately, the rest of the movie sucks because after that it just focuses on the killer and this detective and it's a totally different story and I've rewatched it. It's not a very good movie. I've never seen the remake. Maybe the remake's even better, but the whole opening sequence is just like this isolated little Twilight Zone episode ramped up to 11 and it is scary as shit. Oh, and thanks a lot to my father as well, because the story that I was just telling you when I was young and impressionable and I'm watching this scene, I don't know how the hell he knew, but right about the scene when the dude starts to get really intense, my dad called and the phone rang and I went, fuck. Number three is a movie that I need to rewatch. I plan on doing a review series of this franchise before long. It's been one of my more requested review series. So don't watch this video and pester me about it, but in the next four or five months, probably I will do a review series for this. Exorcist. Three, this is possibly the greatest jump scene of all time, honestly. You have this whole scene where you have this still camera set on a tripod just shooting down this long hallway in a hospital, which already creeps me out. Am I the only one that just thinks hospitals are one of the freakiest fucking settings ever? But you have this whole like at least three minute or so sequence where you're focused on this classic old kind of dressed nurse and she's just moving around in frame, going to all these things. There's other people moving on in the background. She talks to somebody, comes back out, and it's just the stillness of this tripod where you're like, something's gonna happen. What's, what's the deal here? You're, just, you're forced, you're locked in and can't move. And this nurse keeps moving around, and then finally she goes to lock this door and walks away. in this fucker with these goddamn hedge clippers just comes out and it's a blink and you'll miss it scene but if you're engrossed in this quietness and the stillness and the sterile environment of this hospital just kind of focus in on this small little frame that this camera forces you to be in and then that jump scare happens tell me a greater jump scare again I'll wait. Now we are at the top two, and I gotta be honest, these were really hard for me to rank because one, I think, just like the scene that I just talked about, is possibly the greatest jump scare of all time. And the other one is a scene that chilled me to my bone and genuinely scared me as a kid, of which there has only been two movies to do that. So I tossed it back and forth, I went, which one actually impacted me more? Which one genuinely scared me more? And with that being said, number two, is the blood test scene from The Thing, from John Carpenter's The Thing in 1982. 
This, again, between this and that nurse scene in Exorcist 3 is the greatest jump scare of all time, and it's because of the way that John Carpenter crafts this scene. You have the thing, they have these people that are stuck in this Antarctic science center, or this, you know, this, this isolated building, and there's an alien that comes through. If I'm explaining a movie that you've never seen before, you need to stop watching me and watch the goddamn thing. But you have this alien that can basically take replicate any single person or living thing that it comes into contact with. So once they discover this, nobody trusts anybody. They don't know who the thing is. They don't know who's human. And eventually you get Kurt Russell's character that comes up with this idea of how to tell who is the thing and who is human. So he ties up every other person but him and has this helper to where he takes blood from every single person, gets a needle really red hot with his blowtorch and sets it into the blood. And if you are human, the blood simply just pops and curdles. If you're the thing, he expects it to have some kind of a reaction to this hot needle and try to get away from the heat source. And the longer this sequence goes on, the more that you're starting to doubt the validity of this test because there's like five or six people in a row that their blood just pops and curdles and that's it. And you along with the other characters are like, okay, this might be bullshit. Maybe there is no way to tell if it's the thing or not. And right when the scene convinces you of that enough, he sets the needle in and This is pure nonsense. Doesn't prove a thing. I thought you'd feel that way, Gary. You were the only one that could have got to that blood. We'll do you last. Something that comes out and you're like, what the fuck? And it's just a great jump scene because of how quiet it is and how much, how much crafting and how much TLC went into building up to this scare. And then just the aftermath is scary where you have everybody that's glued to a couch and they're tied up and then there's this fucking thing that's coming out and they can't move and they're screaming and the blowtorch won't work and what the fuck's going on? The thing is awesome. God, I love this movie. Which leads us to number one, the all time greatest, scariest movie moment. Rachel. You all knew what was gonna be my number one. You, Rachel. I'm going to twist your back like mine, so you'll never get out of bed again. Zelda from the original Pet Cemetery haunted my dreams as a kid. I have given this story ad nauseum, but I am somebody that, even as a four year old watching slasher movies, I was never scared. I was always just entertained, thought it was cool, thought it was funny, thought it was just this cool little bit of entertainment that not a whole lot of other kids my age had any access to. There was only two movies, two characters in my entire life where I watched them and it unnerved me and it scared me and it made me not want to watch the movie alone and it would actually kind of make me think that the shadow in the corner of my room was this character or, you know, get inside of my head. One of them was Pennywise, Tim Curry's Pennywise, and the other one, the worst of the two, is Zelda from the original Pet Cemetery. Something about the voice, something about just the humanoid kind of look that this character has, the makeup effects, the fact that it's a man playing a woman would just makes it that much more wrong looking in a horror environment. Everything just chilled me to my bone, chilled all of us to our bone. I mean, this is a movie that, as I've grown up, I hear more and more criticisms about the acting and everything else, and I will argue that all day long. But the one thing that every single person that has ever watched Pet Cemetery walks away saying is, holy shit, Zelda, <laughs> nope, nope. Never get out of bed again. Never get out of bed again. I honestly don't think if there's ever gonna be a horror character that will ever be that effective again. Something about just the the perfect mix of how real and how supernatural the original Pet Cemetery is. It's something about that that lack of money that they had back in the 90s to bring this to life and they had to get creative and they had to make Zelda out of a man and just one of those lightning in a bottle moments where the creativity of the film crew and the makeup artist and the actor in this role just brought a monster to life. And that will always be my number one scariest movie moment. So what do you guys think? What are some of your scariest movie moments? Are there some obvious ones that I missed down below? Let me know. Maybe they didn't impact me the way that they impacted you. Don't get violent down in the comment section. 
but let me know what your favorite or your scariest movie moments are and we will talk about it. Thank you so much to my patrons once again for your continued support and I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, if you want to join in the fun, check down in the video description for the link to my Patreon page. While you're at it, like, share, hit the subscribe button so you can check out more top 10 lists, more reviews, and all the other juicy shit on this channel that you will enjoy. And as always, remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.